Well, a door is a fairly simple design boat. It's mainly a big plank bent around an angles form. And uh, when I started designing this boat, I first I figured, well, what's like a minimum boat? I figured it for trailerable boat, 23 to 25 feet. And I wanted the maximum beam. The maximum you can trailer is like eight and a half. And I figured, well, ply sheet of plywood is eight feet wide, so my maximum width bulkhead will be out of a sheet of plywood. And the sides, I like an eye, like a high sided boat. I've been in a lot of following seas and have big wave sweep boats. And I figured four foot, use a full sheet of plywood sides. Actually, it'll overhang a little bit so I can trim it down to the size. But I figured, okay, a uh, four foot high side. And uh, when I built my little 15 foot dory, that was two sheets of plywood split down the middle, joined end on, made two pieces 16 feet long. When you bend them around, you lose about a foot when, from the bends, and so it made a 15 foot boat. So I figured, well, to start off with, what if I had a sheet of plywood, if I joined three sheets together, three 8 foot sheets, I'd make a piece of plywood 24 feet long. And bending that around would make a 23 foot boat. So I figured what I wanted in, I want to say at a minimal boat, two six foot cabins, that's 12 feet, three foot forward for my anchor gear locker, that's 15 feet, three foot for a pilot house. I measured all this stuff out on the floor, you know, it stood in there. Well, yeah, three foot is wide enough for a pilot house. I have a two foot wide door. So that's 18 feet. Uh, and then a five foot back cabin would be 23 feet. Or five foot back deck, rather, excuse me. So, okay, we've got 23 foot boat will work. It's like a minimum. So, what I did, I took my, I made a cardboard scale of 23 foot long by four foot wide piece of plywood. And for the bow, I like even numbers, so I just came back on the bottom of, say, a foot and a half from the edge, cut an angle for my bow, and the stern, most outboard sterns are 12 degrees, so I made a 12 degree angle back there, and this is my 23 foot long by 4 foot wide sheet of plywood. Now there's things you can and can't do with plywood. A plywood boat has to be built for plywood because you can't make what they call compound bends. You can bend it and you can twist it. What you can do with this cardboard you can pretty much do with plywood. You can bend it and twist it. You can't bend it this way. It just won't bend on edge. It just won't do it. So that's why you can't build a boat with compound curves, like with a plank boat, where you can cut your planks and fit each plank to follow the compound curve of a round bottom boat. You can't do that with plywood, but plywood determines the shape of the boat. As you can see, if you hold this straight up and you bend it around, everything stays flat. And there's boats that are built like that, flat iron skiffs. The sides are vertical, the bottom's flat. Some houseboats are built like that. Well, as soon as you turn it on an angle and bend it, see what happens? The bow and the stern rise. The more the angle, the higher they rise. And also, the, the more you bend them in, the more they rise. So, I figured to start out with, which I ended up coming back to, I took a sheet of plywood. Here, well, if I take, here's a sheet of plywood here with the sides cut off and I came in a foot on either side six foot wide bottom is nice so I wanted to have like a bunk on either side two foot plus wide bunk and two feet of walkway down the middle so a six foot wide bottom an eight foot wide top means coming in, in one foot on either side and cutting it off and it ended up giving me a 15 degree angle and I experimented with different angles but I ended up coming back to, to this one yeah, I wanted the transom to be a little less, so I made the transom, uh, I'm using a half inch per foot here. So I made the transom a foot smaller than this, is seven foot wide, maybe a little more. I think I ended up with seven foot three, I have to look on the plans, because I, I ended up changing it and varying them uh, as I experimented with the boat. So I've got my transom, 
I came down a foot on the side here and a foot on the side and I've got my midships bulkhead which would be the back of the pilot house forward of the aft cabin. So I've got my two boat sides here, got my transom and my bulkhead and I've got my green tape so I'm going to make a boat hull. There's my bow. Yeah, she's shaping up already. I entertained myself for days making cardboard boats. Okay, now I need to put trans in. So now I have this. Center bulkhead goes in. Now I have the basic shape of my boat. And you'll see with when it's bent on the angle here, it gives the bottom a little bit of curve, which is called a rocker. Uh, different boats have different rocker. This boat I want a little more, I want the bow a little higher to help her for beaching, to help her go through the waves, to lift the bow over a wave. With a power boat you want what they call a flat run aft, which is back in this section you don't want a whole lot of rocker, a little bit. Because this boat isn't going to be a real high speed planing hull. So I wanted a little bit of, of rocker there, uh, but not a lot. And uh, you can see if the side angles more, it's going to raise the bow and the stern more. And give it more rocker. Yeah. I can show this. A little dory, 15 foot dory that I built, the sides were so angled, such a steep angle, it was made for rowing. And you want a little rocker there, so lift your, you're not dragging your stern through the water. The power boat, when you're pushing it from the stern, you want the buoyancy back there to support the motor. So a rowing door, you'll have a narrow stern, narrow transom, and quite a bit of rocker. But it was such steep angle sides that I actually had to cut a reverse curve in the bottom so that it wasn't bent like a banana. But uh, I tried several different angles, and also what I did... I wanted the bow to flare. I want a flaring bow more than, than what this angle was because this shape here is very similar to the Pacific Power Dories. But I like the, the angle bow because the schooner had a flare on the bow and it really it did several things. It created extra buoyancy in the bow. When you're trying to bury the bow in a wave it'll push back and deflected the spray and also made it wider in the forward cabin. So what I did I made a spreader to spread the bow at the deck, but not at the chine. Spread the shear, but not the chine. So the chine ran its normal course from the last bulkhead forward, other than I put a forward bulkhead in for my chain locker after the stringers were already on. But the forward pilot house bulkhead, in it, which is the back bulkhead of the forward cabin. And forward of that, I put a spreader. I figured I'd run a spreader, end up being a six foot spreader, as far forward as I could, as, as far as the timbers would let me put it, to spread the bow at the deck, which gave it a flaring side, more room in the forward cabin, and it gives me that flare in the bow forward. But now what that does, it means this piece of plywood, as it's bending around, it has to twist twice. It has to twist once to give me the flare, and then it has to twist again so that these pieces will meet. It has to go back in so that these pieces will meet in the stem. But that's what gave me my basic shape of the boat.